Hello. Hi. Yes, hello. Hi. If you're new here, this is a series where I rewatch episodes of Scam and then break them down scene by scene, each episode, and just discuss everything and share my thoughts and everything and all that. So this is a, this is a rewatch. I'm going to be talking about episode 7 of season 2. Um, things are kind of picking up, I, I guess I can say. But I, I was like nervous for the first few episodes of this season. I was like, wow, this is kind of boring. I'm kind of bored. But now I think it's 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 gonna get good because this, this is the part of the season when things get kind of messed up and crazy. So let's get started with talking about episode seven of season two, Scam Friends. Okay, friends, let's just recap first. Short recap of the last episode. So Madden and Charles have officially started dating. Applause. And there, but there are some troubles. But it's quickly resolved by the end of episode six, and so Daphne knows about Manon and Charles because she was she witnessed them locking lips the other day, the other night. So, yeah, let's get started with episode seven now. Okay, so first I wanna um, talk about something quick, not really quick, just this little rant. This show is kind of confusing me. Okay, a question: If this season is in Manon's point of view, and Nora's. Why did we, we, the audience, see what Vilda saw? I, and some of the remakes don't do this, I think, for that reason. Because when Madden and Charles kiss, Daphne is standing there and she sees them. We see it in Daphne's point of view. Madden, Madden doesn't know that Daphne knows. She wouldn't know that they, that she saw her kissing Charles. Daphne is seeing Charles and Madden kiss. It's in her point of view. That's, that's kind of odd. I don't know if they... They do the same thing in OGCM. Because this, this, the whole thing about these seasons is everything is in the main character's point of view. Am I correct? I can't remember if they did the same thing in, in season one with Ava season. If there were other characters who would see things that Ava obviously would not see or know. There's just a lot of things in the season that are like little, little, little stuff that aren't in Madden's point of view. And I'm trying to think back to season two of OG Scam if it's the same thing. I think it's just Daphne, um, Vilda seeing William and Nora kiss, and that's it. Let's just move on. I don't know. It's just something that I noticed. So we left off um, the last episode with Manon seeing Luca get into Alex's car. But this episode we start off with Manon complaining about her shitty battery. And that's foreshadowing, because that comes back again throughout this episode. And then the next episode, when she meets Nico, <laughs> Nico and... Um, Charles's house, right? She says the whole like all that happened because her battery died. She went there, and because she couldn't call Charles, so she just went to his house and didn't know Nico was there, right? And she had to charge her phone, and he offered her a charger. But anyways, Emma is looking at pictures of Alex and Luca, just like joking about them probably being a couple, like being together. And then Manon tells um, Emma what she saw the other day. Luca getting into um, Alex's car, and um, Emma now thinks they may be together. She's like, "What? Um, maybe they're dating? Hmm, maybe because we we know that Luca is probably gay. I mean, it's not like it's not a clear fact. There has been no proof, but kind of proof. Then, um, yeah, Madden's like, no, maybe not. Yeah, and then Mika's there. He wants to know what the hell's going on. He's like, "What are you, what are you guys talking about?" And um, Emma tells him. But anyways, Mika wants to see if Luca's actually gay. I don't know why he cares, but he cares. So he leaves to do some detective work. <laughs> Whatever that entails, we'll find out later. Okay, so now we're at the next day at school, and Madden and Charles are making out. They kiss privately, so Daphne does not know about their dirty little secret. You know, he asks Madden if he can come over at her place. Madden's like, yeah. Um, yeah, plans are made. And then Madden asks if she can come and meet his brother. Because remember the last episode, they had this whole fight or discussion about how um, Madden really wants to know him. She wants to get to know him. And by doing that, she has to meet his family and all that. Yeah. So Charles is like, sure, whatever. By the end of the week, he says, um, next week we'll, we'll, we'll sit down together with Nico and drink hot cocoa, okay? And yeah, and then Charles gets a text from Daphne asking about a party. Men's like, do not, um, invite us. We don't want to go. I don't want to be in the same room as you and Daphne, Charles. But later, we're in the cafeteria with Daphne and Emma, 
and Manon is there now, and I don't understand this at all. I said this while watching OG Scam, and I was like, um, why is Manon's face so messed up with the lipstick? It doesn't make any sense. Um, okay, so in the last scene, her lipstick, let me check. Go back, go back, go back. Okay, in the last, in the last scene, Manon's lipstick is perfectly intact. It's there, nothing's on Charles' face. The lipstick on his lips, like, smudged, nothing smudged on her face. So, why in the next scene do they have Manon with her face, her lips all smudgy? Oh, that always gives me a huge laugh, but I, I, it's, it still confuses me. Um, in Scam Germany, though, Druk, they actually do show her lips being smudged by um, William. Scam Germany's William. They show her lips being smudged during their kissing scene. It's like terrible. It, it looks very bad. It's all over her face. It looks worse than this. And he doesn't even say anything. So he's not like, hey, babe, you better get a wet nap and fix that, right? You have lipstick in your teeth, sis. It's funny. It's it's just for laughs. You know, it's nice to see a put together character like Man in Nora in such a messy state. It's very refreshing. Okay, and Daphne and Emma are just as confused as I was when I first watched this scene. Okay, <clears throat> and Emma tells Daphne about the party that Manon and Charles were just talking about in the last scene. And yeah, Manon's like, she doesn't want to go, right? Because she just want to be, be in the same space as Daphne and Charles. It's weird. And by the way, it's a party on a bus. They're having a bus party. How cool is that? <laughs> Oh god, I, I always say I want a party on a bus, but I feel like that would be the most terrifying thing ever. It's just like a squeezed space. So there's, it's it's a small space. Anne does not want to want to go because obviously it's a, it's on a bus. It's in closed space with Taffy and Charles. They're gonna be up each other's asses, you know, close up. Anyways, she texts um Charles, "Why the hell did you invite us to your stupid bus party?" Daphne is trying to get Manon to hook up with other guys, and this is just Daphne trying to coax the truth from Manon, right? She knows that Manon and Charles are, like, secretly dating. Well, she saw him kiss, but she doesn't really know if they're- maybe-, maybe what if it was just a kiss, Daphne? But yeah, whatever, they're- it's obvious. There's so much proof. Like, look at her lipstick. It's smudged. It, is, it doesn't feel realistic. I mean, I know um, Daphne at this point is like fine and everything. She's over Charles. She's relieved. She's fine with her life and who she is. She feels beautiful. So maybe she would test Manon. Maybe. Maybe it makes sense. Maybe she's just she's not hurt, right? She doesn't care about Charles anymore. Maybe that. Maybe it makes sense. I'm not sure. Uh, Emma, by the way, doesn't even know about Manon and Charles. I just realized that. Because she did know about the date, but she doesn't know about how serious they are. Later that day, um, Charles comes over to Manon's place. That We are in Manon's room and we're making out with Manon. <laughs> we're, 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 we're doing that. <laughs> okay, so they talk again about Manon saying how she will not have sex before marriage. And Charles's reply to this, or what he says about it, is just like... No, you're not doing that. We're, we're obviously going to do it at some point. Cause, and I also remember this weird line from OG William. He was like, in like that first scene we saw him together in bed, he was like, Give me two weeks and all your clothes will be off. Or something like that. That was so weird. Like, it's, it's, just the, it's just the creepy vibes I get from William and Charles. You know? What if she was serious about, like, um, not being- wanting to have sex before marriage? What if that's- why that was her actual plan? Wouldn't you- why wouldn't you respect her wishes? I hope that was a joke. That was a joke, right? He was just kidding. Maybe that was, he maybe was just playing around. It wasn't creepy at all. I hope. Because, dude, um, respect her wishes, her beliefs, or whatever. Like, you're not gonna be like, oh, fuck that. We're totally doing it at some point. Um, anyways. Okay, so Mika barges in. We love a queen who doesn't knock. And um, it's a cute exchange. He meets um, Charles. He, reali he realizes that Charles is Daphne's Charles, as he says. Charles, Charles. But yeah, they meet. It's, 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 it's the same thing as OG. It's, it's cute, though. And then Daphne texts Manon about <laughs> a guy she wants her to meet, just pressuring her into telling her the truth about Charles, right? But, um... The scene isn't bad or anything, though. Okay, so next day, fellas, 
Manon is telling Emma that Mika doesn't think Luca's gay. And yeah, that's basically it. She she tells her how <laughs> Mika's plan to lure Luca in didn't work. Like, he denied the request. Okay, but that doesn't mean anything, right? What? Right? Come on. Do more digging. Okay, before I was like against this whole thing. <laughs> Violation of Luca's privacy and all that. But now I'm like, um, that's it? That's all you're gonna do? Mika? But yeah, I'm pretty sure Mika already knows though about Luca. Wait, how did he go with OG again? Did he know? No, he didn't know that Luca was gay. <clears throat> but no, he did. Iskiel did know um, Isaac was gay. Because he has amazing gaydar, is what he said, I think. He suspected. But I think at this point, Luca is living in Mika's basement, like how it was in OG Scam, right? Because Luca's having issues at home. He doesn't want to live with his mom and all that because she's crazy or something. But yeah, um, he, he and Luca are are like friends at this point, or acquaintances, he's living in his, his house. So, um, anyways. Okay, so Manon gets texts from Charles, and she can't meet Nico because he left for college. So he's like, maybe next summer. And Manon's like, what the fuck? The trust issues start to arise once again. And then Manon tells Emma about Luca's heated phone conversation in the last episode. And Emma thinks it might it might have been Sarah because they did break up at some point. Um, so maybe that was it. Mm -hmm. And wasn't Alex? Maybe. And then Emma tells her about Luca's home life, his parents' divorce, and all that, and how it sucks. We're just we're just getting more about Luca. We're getting more character development. And then they see Alexander give um, a weird gesture to Luca, and Emma still thinks that. They are a thing. It was pretty. It was pretty suspicious, right? He was like, "Call me." He did the "call me" sign, and yeah. So maybe. <laughs> I mean, I already know what's happening, but still. Anyways, um, Daphne is there for a second and tells them to be prepared for the bus party, and then we're on the bus party. We're at the bus. It's 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 a literal party on a bus. It looks fun though. I'm not gonna lie. There's like lights and stuff and music, <laughs> flashy lights. It's a big bus, and we love big buses. But unfortunately, if, if, unfortunately, sorry, the bus doesn't move. How are we gonna have a bus party while the bus actually moving? That kind of defeats the purpose of a bus party. Wait, we're on a bus. If we're just gonna stay in one place, we could have just had a party at a house. Like, you don't have a party on a plane and just stay in the airport. <laughs> okay, so this party is nice. I like the- I like the way it was filmed. Cinematography. Good cinematography. It looks amazing. Thank you, Scam Friends. It's very cinematic. Anyways, so Daphne approaches Charles, and Manon's there, she's just watching. She's like, oh, this bitch. <laughs> and, by the way, I wish Manon would look more guilty. You know, like what she's doing with Charles and all that because she doesn't know that Daphne knows right so she would be feeling oh, like, oh really guilty at this point like lying to her friend literally lying and same with OG Nora she didn't really seem all that guilty about everything I and she would say that she was guilty but can you look guilty mm -hmm. um I would be shitting my pants if I was Manon or Nora right um having to face Daphne every day after having a full-on two-hour makeout sesh with her crush that's a lot to have on your plate okay 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 anyways um so i have to officially apologize to manon and charles this is my official apology okay i was i was heading toward it earlier but now i'm just like i need to i need to apologize manon and charles i am so sorry for the way for the things i said about you two i said you guys were stiff and stale I'm just gonna, yeah, I said that you you guys didn't have much of the Norn William vibes. It wasn't there, but now I'm saying it is there. It's there, and I noticed it full on in this scene. Okay, so here we have Manon and Charles just staring at each other. The music around them fades to some sweet piano, and they are just staring at each other. 
It's so cute. The staring, they do it. It's what Nora and William always do. They just stare at each other. And it's nice. I felt something right here in my chest. My chest. I felt it. <laughs> I felt it. Okay. The chemistry is there. I feel the chemistry. Okay. It, it just took a while for it to, to surface, but it's there. Is it Wilhelm and Nora level? No. Not yet. Okay, we're at episode 7. We're still going, people. There's like, what, 5 more episodes left? I think there's like 13 episodes in this season. But it's good. Okay, point for Scam Friends. It's, it's good. But then the energy kind of shifts at some point when someone is telling Charles something that makes him upset. We don't hear it. We don't know what's happening at this point. But yeah, it's the fight. We know what happens. People have already watched this. You guys know what happens. And Charles calls the boys, tells them to arm themselves because there's going to be a fight. And the girls are just confused. They decide to leave. And then they witness the beginning of the fight. It's kind of reminding me of elementary school, if I'm being honest. This whole fight, no, not the, the beginning of the fight, right? It's just the guys shoving at each other. It's like, oh, what you gonna do? You gonna hurt me? You gonna, you, what you gonna do, huh? Son, what you, like, it's just them getting in each other's faces. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the first part of the fight. I already said, nose touching and shoving. And what happens next is actually kind of beautiful. The fight sucks. We don't like fighting here on this channel, but we love the cinematic view of things. It's, ah, uh, I have to say, when Charles smashes the bottle on that guy's head, it looked beautiful, okay? It was, the, the glass is like shiny and shimmering. It looks beautiful, is what I'm saying. It's sparkly. It's in slow motion. Didn't say that yet, but yep. The slow motion is, is it's top notch in this episode. It's there, okay? And I like it. It's good. Um, it's the same thing as OG, really. But... <sighs> okay, so... I don't think William or Charles ever argues that this was in self-defense. Oh wait, he kind of does, right? He said he was protecting his friends. Like, the next episode, he claims he was protecting his friends and all that from this guy. But that was not- he weren't protecting anyone, sir. You had a bottle in your hand, like an alcohol bottle with alcohol in it, empty, and you smashed it on his head, unprovoked. He was literally just standing there. And this is something that most of the remakes, I think, kind of change, or they just don't add. I don't remember if all of them add this fight scene, but some of them kind of change up. I think in NL, it's kind of different because they had William, whatever his name was in Animal, they have his friend on the floor getting his ass beat, right? He's, he's getting pounded on. And William is just like, oh my god, I gotta, I gotta help him. This, this is my bro, my bestie, I gotta help him. And, he, and that is when he slams the bottle on his head. In self-defense. That was actually in self-defense. Self-defense? Defending someone else, really? He was saving a life, right? It was, it was, it, it made sense there. But in this, an OG, n not really. <clears throat> and it doesn't make any sense here, and I don't like it. They could, they, they, this is something, something that I wish Scam France would have changed, this fight. It, it, it could have been so easy to change this. They could have had, they could have had someone on William's head, just pounding him, beating him on his, on his, his, his face and all that, right? And the bottle is just within hand's reach, and he takes it and smashes the guy over the head with it while it's on the floor, being beaten. That would make sense. That is self-defense. You wouldn't get arrested for that. But this is literally assault. This is a crime. So, um, you, you can argue, he does say that he was like, well, Santa does say, that he was probably scared, didn't know what was gonna happen and all that. <sighs> People are scared, they get pretty violent, yeah. But, I don't know, they do the, I think they do the same thing in Germany, Druk. With their William, he kind of, it's with a skateboard and not a bottle, I think. He smashes a skateboard on someone's head very violently, and that wasn't in self-defense. I don't think, like, unprovoked, he came, up, came up behind him and just smashed his head in with a skateboard. Really? That was rude. I didn't like that. Uh, some of them do it differently. The only example I have is NL. Was it NL? Yeah, it was NL. And... Maybe something else, but what the fuck, I think they did it too. 
Maybe Austin? I can't remember anything much from season two of Austin. I remember a lot, but not the small stuff that kind of pissed me off. I remember I remember the stuff that kind of pissed me off, but this stuff is just like, I don't remember much. But yeah, that was the fight scene that I didn't like. Um, Manon is like, wow, fuck this. She's like super mad and scared and leaves. And that is the end of episode seven, fellas. That was a ride. It was so short. That episode was like, that was 19 minutes long, but that felt so long. Maybe it's because I was talking for longer. Yeah. Just thank you so much for listening. I hope you will stick around for more. Feel free to subscribe, share, like. Bye, fellas.